now. Um, let me talk briefly about the not self because I see there's a theme there and it does correlate to the type. So like I said, you know, oversimplifying today because there are five different types, but two billion different configurations. So everybody's incredibly unique, but every type will kind of have a sign that reveals whether or not they're on or off track. And so manifesting generators and generators, a sign of being off track is a sense of deep frustration. It's like resentment, dissatisfaction in the work that you're doing, like feeling like you're chasing after things and it's not coming to you. A sense of being on track is a feeling of deep satisfaction. So always just paying attention to where do I feel the most frustrated? Where do I feel the most satisfied? It is normal to have moments like um, where you feel a little bit of frustration because when that becomes, but when that becomes the overwhelming feeling, that's really a time to kind of step back and reevaluate and wait for your gut to pull you back in. For projectors, off track is a sense of bitterness, not feeling appreciated, not feeling recognized. On track is a sense of success. It can be material success or just feeling recognized, appreciated in our relationships, in our work. For um, manifestors, off track is a sense of anger um, when often their flow is disrupted and they're not kind of able to be in their own creative flow and a sense of on track is peace. Um, it basically is like able to manifest with ease, kind of be in their own flow, not be disrupted. And for reflectors, off track is disappointment, um, which is like they're taking in like um, energy that's not really theirs and getting lost in it. And on track is a sense of surprise. It's kind of like allowing themselves to feel different on different people every day and it, like living with a sense of like surprise and wonder and just kind of seeing what's emerging. Okay, so let us talk about the inner authority and how we make decisions. Um, Andre asked one question. I'm going to ask, I'm going to leave time for more questions at the end just so I don't get off track, but to answer yours quickly, Andre. So if you look at, if you've looked at your human design chart, you're going to see it's a crazy looking like chart with colors and white. The idea is that all those different shapes kind of represent different functions in your body, like your communication, your intuition, like your gut, your drive. And when the areas are colored in, it's kind of where you're drawing your energy from, the things that are more consistent and reliable within you. And the areas that are white are all the areas where you're the most open and sensitive to kind of taking in other people's energy and are often the areas where you can get the most taken off track. So we can't go through all those today, but they're like one of the most important pieces to look into after the type and the strategy, because it's just really useful to know where we can get taken off track. And what makes the reflector reflector is that every single one of their centers is white, which means they are taking in energy from all over, but it creates this amazing capacity for wisdom. And I'm going to give you guys a discount at the end, but one of my offerings is a written guide to design that covers all the key pieces and all those open centers are covered in it, which are just, again, super important to look into. So, um, okay, let's talk about the inner authority. So I know some of you guys are just looking it up. We're going to have time for questions at the end. So if you're like, I'm a projector, I didn't even hear what that meant. Make sure to ask me at the end and I'll go over it again. We're now going to talk about how we make decisions. So if you look up your design, you will see that there's a type and you'll also see something called the inner authority. Do you guys see that? It's going to say something like sacral, emotional, splenic, self-projected. If you guys see what you are, type it in. I would love to see what we have here. Um, but this is basically around, or none. None, you also have one, I promise. So inner authority, sacral. Okay, cool. So emotional. So our inner authority is basically around how we're designed to make decisions. And none of us are meant to make decisions from like just like creating a pro con list and try to rationalize it because while our minds are incredibly powerful, we can often convince ourselves in or out of anything. And so human design kind of reveals what our each unique inner authority is, which is the thing that we're meant to rely on to make decisions that are kind of consistent and reliable for us every single time. And it is kind of, oh, the work is really in surrendering to our body and kind of that innate wisdom there. So I'm going to share some of the different ones now. Um, okay, so let's start with sacral. So I know that we have Barbara who's sacral, um, Victoria. So sacral is basically all around your gut response. Sacral is only possible for manifesting generators or generators. You know, there's so much advice out there like, follow your gut, listen to your gut. But like, that's not actually true for us, true for all of us, but it is especially true for these people. When you are a sacral decision maker, it means that you are meant to trust your gut response in the moment. If you're not getting a full body gut response in the moment, it either means it is not the right thing or it is not the right time yet. The, full, the gut response often shows up as like kind of an excited buzz in your stomach, an uncomfortable knot. It's like your body opening up, your body shutting down. It's the uh-huh in your voice, uh-uh. And it's just like this kind of feeling in your body that again, expansion towards something or contraction away. A very powerful way to kind of tune into your gut response is to have the people around you ask you very specific questions. So for example, 
my partner has a sacral, he's a sacral decision maker. If I ask him where he wants to go to dinner, he will just like give me a blank stare. But if I give him options, if I'm like, do you want to go out or cook at home? Do you want to make cauliflower or sweet potato? If I give him things to respond to, he will get out of his head and immediately like, yeah, that feels right. No, it doesn't. So like often like to have that, to kind of elicit that sacral response, that gut response, it's really good to have people around you give you options and ask you specific questions to help you tune into that gut. So I would really just like ask the sacral people to reflect on, does it feel like you're connected to your gut? response like does it feel like a thing that you feel and two does it feel like a thing that you really trust so if you are an emotional decision maker and if you guys have any questions on the sacral piece definitely let me know if you guys are an emotional decision maker so this is possible for manifestors projectors manifesting generators generators it means that you might have a gut response you might have a strong intuition about something but you basically are not meant to make decisions in the moment for you, clarity comes with time. The best thing that you can do is take a little bit of space from a decision before you commit to it because you are always riding an emotional wave of highs and lows and highs and lows, which is so natural. But the work is to not make decisions on the high or low of that emotional wave. I have this in my design and I'm on an emotional high and I might say yes to all the things and then I'll wake up the next day and I'm like, why in the world did I commit to that? So if you are an emotional decision maker, pay attention to your initial instinct, but give yourself maybe a day or two or three, a little bit of space from the decision to see if you still feel strongly about it. It's often by taking space that you kind of get this clarity and you're like, okay, yes, this is the right thing. So yeah, you might have a gut response, but then it kind of might change. So again, giving yourself space is the best thing that you can do. In romantic relationships, it would be really useful to have a period of courtship, not kind of jumping into anything impulsive. Possibly. But just knowing that there's a depth and a clarity that comes when you give yourself a beat and give yourself a moment before you commit to it. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm going to get to none. I will cover these all. So let's talk about splenic. Do we have anyone who's splenic here? Splenic is only possible. Yes, Alexand. So splenic is only possible for projectors and Mary. Okay, only possible for projectors and manifestors. So splenic is all around the intuition. Intuition is different than the gut response. The sacral piece I mentioned was like a very visceral feeling in your belly. Intuition is quiet. Intuition is a quiet knowing. It's like a whisper that you hear, like tingles that you feel, resonance with something or not, a voice that you hear, and it's so spontaneous. It basically disappears as quickly as it comes and in all the ways of making decisions, the splenic one is the absolute quietest. And so the best thing that you can do if you're splenic is to basically have practices to kind of get quiet enough to hear your intuition. So whether that's through meditation, journaling, going on a walk, sometimes maybe just taking space away from other people to kind of connect your intuition. And your work is to be impulsive, to be spontaneous. Like as soon as you get that intuitive urge to act on it, you know, if you're like, I've got to sleep on things, I've got to wait, that's not actually how you're meant to do it. You're meant to kind of be very impulsive as soon as you kind of get that instinctual yes. And so really tuning into what that intuition feels like for you. So I would encourage the splenic people to reflect on, do you feel connected to your intuition? Um, and then two, does it feel like a thing that you trust? Um, yeah. So Victoria, yeah, Victoria said, I'm manifesting generator. I hate that everyone is so slow. I'm already seeing the end result and others are still debating. So again, manifesting generators move very quickly. They can see where things are going and skip a few steps along the way. So whenever I work with a lot of teams and whenever I work with manifesting generator managers, I'm like, just don't expect people to keep up with you. Like they're all going to bring their unique gift to the table, but like it's not going to be the speed that you bring. And so I think why human design can be so powerful is it not only supports us and kind of connecting to how we can individually be the most successful in our our careers and our lives and our relationships but it also really helps us understand the people around us like how to best work with our colleagues you know how to best support our partners how to best parent our children how to best be compassionate to our parents like just starting to understand how different each person operates creates so much more compassion because you're like oh i need to communicate with them in this way and i'm not going to expect them to be more similar to me than they actually are um okay do we have anyone who is self-projected i don't think i see anyone here um so self-projected people, it's only possible for rejectors, I'll go through it quickly, basically means that for these people, their truth comes when they give it a voice. The best thing that they can do when they make decisions is surround themselves by people that they trust and just let themselves talk. It's by just talking that their clarity like naturally emerges. Um, and so they kind of just say things out loud. It's really good to surround themselves with people that are not like... Um, that are not giving them advice or like have an agenda, but are just creating space for them to share. Um, and again, just like letting yourself give it a voice and even maybe journaling or voice recording or talking aloud to yourself can be powerful ways to tune into it. 
I don't think we have anyone here who's ego, but just so you guys get a little bit of context, ego is possible for manifestors and projectors. Ego is all about whether or not you really have the willpower to do something. It's always asking yourself, like, do I really have the willpower or the fortitude for this thing? Is my heart really in it? And they're actually designed to be very healthily selfish in their decisions, to always ask themselves, like, will this decision truly take care of me? Because that's where I can be the most of service. I'm not doing this just because somebody's asking me to. Um, I know some of you are none. And none is basically what we call a mental projector. This is only possible for projectors. And it means that it is really important for you to kind of talk things out and give things a voice, like I mentioned for a little bit ago. But you're also incredibly sensitive to your physical environment. So one of the best things that you can do when you make decisions is basically be in different environments that feel really good, talk things out in those spaces and then kind of see what does emerge. You know, knowing that again, it's like being in the right space, talking things out and like letting the truth come through your voice, knowing that like your knowing comes when you actually give it a voice, but knowing that there's an added layer of being in environments that feel really good. The last decision making is just for reflectors. I am touched on this briefly, but reflectors are basically designed to give themselves a full 30 days before they commit to a big decision, which sounds a little bit wild to me, but every reflector I've worked with seems to totally understand it. And the idea is they need a sample decision from lots of different like angles to actually know what's correct for them because they are, as somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was Andre, they're really sensitive. They're going to take in a lot of other people's energy. So it's so important for them to kind of go through their cycle and really sense into something like sense into whether or not something's correct for them. I had a reflector client a few months ago and like she met a photographer and she was like, oh my God, I want to be a photographer. This is amazing. She got so consumed with his excitement, you know? And then three weeks later, she's like, I'm good. On to the next thing. So like they really need that sampling time to really ensure something's correct for them. Okay. So I'm going to open it up for questions in a second because I know some of you guys missed the first part and I want to make sure that it's all clear because I know it's a lot of information. So you can type in questions now if you want. I'm just going to do a little bit of a close. I'll give you guys a discount code. But, you know, basically at its essence, human design is really kind of the science of understanding ourselves. You know, like I said, there are two billion different configurations. It kind of really um, surfaces all the energetics, all the stuff that's underneath the surface and gives us kind of the tools to actually just like align in our lives and really leverage exactly who it is we are and step into our uniqueness. When we really understand our human design, we can use it in every decision that we make from like how we're picking partners, you know. Um, picking jobs, being in relationships, all the things. And it really just gives us a language and a framework to find our flow. And I think why I fell in love with human design is that I think for so long, we've been looking for authority outside of our ourselves in terms of teachers and guides and gurus. And human design reminds us that like, we're the only ones that know. And it's about helping each person kind of tap into their own inner authority in a way that they can really trust. And also to remember that we all do things differently. Like how you're meant to build a business is different how I am than like, and how you're meant to be in a relationship might be different than me. So just like understanding what is our unique blueprint and how can we really honor that? Um, so we did create a discount code for, I'm Erin Claire Jones everywhere on Instagram, my website, and I do individual sessions and partnership sessions and team sessions. But I also have an offering called The Blueprint, which is basically a 30 page kind of PDF personalized to your, your unique design. And it kind of gives you all the key pieces, everything we talked about today and so much more. So it's just kind of like your own operating manual that you can keep returning to, to kind of just like ensure you're living in alignment in your life. It's like the best place I would recommend to get started. Um, and the discount code is a small world and I'm going to include the link right here. Um, but yeah, it covers everything that we talked about today and so much more. So, um, somebody asked, how do we protect the white areas? So like I said, when we look at the human design chart, there are basically going to be areas that are colored in and areas that are white. The areas that are colored in are the things that we're kind of drawing our energy from, the things that are more consistent and reliable within us. And the areas that are white are the areas where we are the most open and sensitive to kind of taking in other people's energy. And so it can be really useful to know what those, so it's going to be a different you know, tactic to get them to kind of protect each one, but it's the areas where we can get the most taken off track, but also the areas where we have like the greatest capacity for wisdom. So for example, like if you have your emotional center open, um, which is going to be true for anyone that is not an emotional decision maker. So sacral, splenic, you guys are all going to have it open. It basically means that you are incredibly sensitive to other people's emotions. Not only can you experience other people's emotions, but you can actually experience that it's amplified within yourself and often more intensely than other people might feel it. So the shadow would be like taking on stuff that's not yours, getting lost in other people's emotional waves, like avoiding confrontation, not fully expressing your truth. And the wisdom is like really having this healthy detachment of knowing what's yours, what's not, not taking it on as your own, always taking physical space when you are start to feel a lot and you're not sure it's yours to kind of disconnect yourself and come back to your own neutrality. And so in terms of how to protect the white areas in general, I would say really understanding each of your open centers so you can like start to really notice the minute you get taken off track and can kind of start to reconnect to yourself. 
like one of my biggest ones is just like being overzealous and doing too much. So at least knowing that I like, I'm so much more quicker kind of pulling back and knowing when to like disconnect from it. So knowing what they are and knowing the shadow and the wisdom can be really helpful for that. Um, Glenda said for projectors, I heard that we need to be invited. Yes. So the strategy for projectors is all about waiting for a sense of recognition and invitation before engaging. The idea is that as a projector, you just bring like a very unique energy to the table. Your gift is not in how much you can do, but it's really in your perspective and the way that you see the world. And so it's so key that you feel really recognized and invited in before engaging. You don't need an invitation when it comes to like studying a system, moving to a new city, but when it involves like sharing your gifts with people or moving in with somebody or marrying someone, so important for that sense of invitation or recognition to be there. So I would encourage your projectors to reflect like where do you feel the most recognized and invited in in your life already? Like how can you invest more in those spaces? Recognition is like everything for us as projectors. So really honoring that. Um, okay, Victoria said, can we read somewhere more about it? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of information online. It's a little bit crazy online. You know, I think that like, it's, um, it's just like all over the place. So that's why I really recommend the blueprint to kind of just like get in clear on like what is unique to you. There are some amazing books, but they're a little bit more like textbooky, but I'm happy to recommend them if that'd be useful. Um, but yeah, but the blueprint is the, the thing that will cover all the key pieces that are relevant to your design. And if you're really interested in learning about human design in general, there's a great book called The Definitive Guide to Human Design. Um, manifesting generator regarding relationships, what to look, what to look out for, how to tune in. So, you know, human design is just so useful in terms of relationships, like I said before, because I think where we often get so tripped up is when we kind of expect someone to be different than what they are, more similar to us. So human design kind of just like reminds us of, um, of just like how we can honor each other's differences. So I would say if you're a manifesting generator, remember that you're meant to let things come to you and wait for that gut response. And so rather than just being like, oh yeah, like I should go on this date. They like seem great. It's like, I'm going to wait for somebody to light up my body and then I'm going to pursue the thing. Whether that's on an app, whether or not that's like, you know, you see somebody at a party and you get lit up and pursuing that, like kind of waiting for that gut response to guide you. And um, also knowing that even though you might have this amazing energy to kind of build and create, your partner might not be able to meet you there. <laughs> you know what I mean? They might be a projector like me and like they might not have that same capacity to like do and create and all the time. And so I would just say like not expecting them to do as much or move as quickly as you and also really tapping into your inner authority. So if you're a sacral decision maker, trusting your gut response in the moment with regard to relationships. And if you are um, an emotional decision maker, know that for you, like it's important to like have a period of courtship and really take your time before you commit to things. Um, somebody said, what is the best match in terms of love relationship for manifesting generators? So I would never say that like, um, that that like manifesting generators can only date manifesting generators or generators or projectors like i believe any combination is possible and there's an aspect of human design where you literally like do partnership analysis and it's so revealing um but i think that like it's really important to just like understand the differences like if you're dating another manifesting generator there might be like this real sense of like foundational just like friendship harmony it's like we really get each other but if you're dating a projector like you're just there will have to be acknowledgement that you guys are incredibly different and how can you honor them like my partner's a generator we are radically different in all the ways and human design has just reminded us like what are the tools to actually leverage that um like he doesn't expect me to keep up with him you know like i need a lot of space to reconnect my own energy like we just understand the differences and so i would say anything is possible I would make sure you're really attracted to someone first, there's real chemistry, and then kind of look at the two charts and be like, how can we best support and honor each other's differences? There is an aspect of human design that does suggest, especially for projectors, reflectors, and manifestors, although I kind of believe it's true for everyone, is that it's really best to sleep in our own bed, to like not sleep with a partner every single night. Um, and I know that's like really non-traditional. There's so much stigma around it. But the idea is that we take in so much energy when we are sleeping um, from somebody else that it's so much easier to kind of wake up as ourselves when we're just waking up in our own energy and in our own space. So I think it can be really healthy for relationships. So maybe sometimes just practicing like what happens if I like, you know, go to bed earlier, wake up later, have a little bit of space to kind of just reconnect to my own energy. Um, okay, let's see. It feels like everyone always wants to pick our brain as manifesting generators, as we know a lot about various things. Totally. And also I would remind you that like as a manifesting generator or a generator, like there's this amazing, like just like natural energy and life force and vitality that you carry. And because of that, people can really want to take advantage of it. And not like in a malicious way, it's just like, oh, will you spend time with me? Will you handle this? And so it's just like, so, I mean, we all need to learn boundaries, but it's just so important for manifesting generators and generators to know that 
while they have amazing energy and life force, it's finite. And the more they say yes to the things that actually light them up and are exciting for them, the more they're going to create energy for everyone around them and kind of attract more to them. But the more they're saying yes to things just because they think they should, because somebody has asked, it's going to drain your battery so quickly. So having very clear boundaries and as much as possible, only saying yes to the things that actually do kind of spark you. Um, okay. So somebody asked, I checked on the chart that the mind and the throat have color and the rest is blank. I'm a projector, but what do those shades mean? So again, when an area is colored in, in your design, it basically means that's kind of where your consistent energy is coming from, what you can rely on. And the areas that are white are the areas where you're taking other people's energy. So for this person, it means their mind. So it's going to be the second from the top and then the square below that. So the, um, the, it's basically not the top one, but the bottom two below it. So your mind and your thread are defined, which means that you've got this very kind of powerful, consistent voice. I'm not looking at your design, so I can't tell you what that is. And also just like a very powerful mind, like a powerful processing mind, like are here to have like powerful opinions, make sense of things, inspire through people through kind of through what you say. Um, but all the areas that are white are areas where you're a little bit more sensitive. I often say these kind of projectors are like such unbelievable CEOs or managers because they really are so um, amazing at like, um, just like taking in everyone else's energy, being so sensitive and kind of knowing how to best leverage a team and the people around them. Okay, let's see. What is the compatibility between types for business and private life? Is there a difference? A little bit. So, so I think again, private life, like I believe any type can find each other, but it is interesting when you layer two charts on top of each other, you'll start to see, is the relationship like really held together and strong? Is there like a lot of space? Is it like not held together as much? So there's, are you like really triggering each other where like who's dominating who? So like, it can be so revealing in that way. Um, I think with business, like honestly, you know, projectors and generators, projectors and manifesting generators can be such a powerful combination because they bring such different energies to the table. As a projector, I've always had a generator or manifesting generator business partner. Um, and, but you know, again, I think anything's possible as long as you understand the differences. But again, I think that like projector generator, projector manifesting generator can be very powerful in business. Um, and when you're kind of building entire teams, you will also want like a whole mix of different energies because you can imagine even just like with the little that I shared, it's like, you know, manifestors like get the thing started manifesting generators and generators bring the energy to kind of bring a thing to life projectors guide the process and reflectors kind of mirror it back and just let us know how it's all going um so generally it is a little bit different but it is a little bit hard to generalize because it's so specific to each person's design so if the inner authority is none, what do you use as an inner guide? And so for you, it's all about your voice. It basically means that your clarity comes when you give things a voice and speak things out and are in environments that feel good because they're going to bring out different things. So the best thing that you can do is actually just go through this process where you're kind of sounding out things to your environment and to people that you trust. And it's basically by kind of doing that, that your clarity just like comes through your voice. It's often like, you'll just say something and the tone of your voice will change. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that does feel right or it doesn't feel right. So for you, the best thing that you can do is actually just like allow yourself to go through that process, kind of just like speak things out. And it's through the voice that actually the clarity becomes very clear. Somebody said, can you clarify more on the emotional solar plexus? So if you are an emotional decision maker, which again, as a reminder, is possible for generators, manifesting generators, projectors, and manifestors, it means that you guys are not meant to make decisions in the moment. It means that clarity for you comes with time. The best thing that you can do when you make a decision is to sleep on things and feel into things before you commit. This is especially important for the big decisions. Like in terms of like daily decisions, like business or what you're going to eat or like who you're going to dinner with, like, of course, just kind of trust your knowing in the moment and your design, specific design will reveal that. But when it's a big decision of like, I'm moving here, I'm taking on this new client, like I'm entering this new relationship, like just trust that like you need to kind of feel into things and the best thing that you can do is buy yourself time and wait for this like clarity because you don't want to make a decision on an emotional high or an emotional low, but kind of wait for the sense of clarity and calm. Let me know, Lama, if that answers your question. And you can imagine how useful it would be to know who around you is emotional and who's not. Like my partner, sacral, so he makes decisions at the moment. I'm emotional. I need a whole lot more time. So useful to know that difference. So he doesn't make me wrong for that, or I don't expect something different from him. And kind of understand that we just like kind of operate in different time frames here. Um, okay. I can imagine certain jobs are more suited to one than other types. Trading floors are full of generators. So yeah, in some ways, yes, but I also never want human design to feel kind of restrictive where it's like, you can be only a generator in this job. Like I think anything's possible as we kind of like 
um, basically just like honor our unique design. So like anyone could be a CEO, but they're probably going to do it really differently. You know what I mean? Like, like projectors are so suited to be leaders, but it's because they're invited into leadership and they're so wise about other people and they kind of know how to fully leverage other people's energy. You know, generators, like if they're so lit up by leading, then a hundred percent, like manifesting generators, as long as they don't have to handle the details, like kind of can do all the things at once. Like manifestors as long as they have a lot of freedom and their like primary roles in the innovating and reflectors it's like they can just kind of like offer their perspective but again aren't expected to do all the doing so i think that yes you're going to find like when i work with teams like you know often my teams are a lot of like generators and manifesting generators but i think that like anything's possible as long as you really honor it you know so um i'm sure there's gonna be more generators than most in like on in those environments or also maybe some types that are trying to be generators. But again, I think that like anything's possible. We just kind of have to like enter into it in a way that's really aligned with our design. Um, so I heard that um, food also affects your design. Yes, so human design goes so deep, you guys. There are so many layers. Um, so, you know, if you look at the, if you have your chart up and you look at the very top left arrow, it's gonna be facing left or right. I don't know if you guys don't see that. And that basically is, I can pull up a photo if you can't, but basically if it's facing left, it means that like, it's really good for you to like eat more consistently. Like your brain needs fuel. So like eating when you wake up, eating like breakfast, lunch, dinner, like snacks throughout the day, like fueling your brain is so powerful. Um, if it's facing kind of right, it's a little bit more inconsistent. Fasting might be more natural for you. Like eating when you're hungry, drinking when you're thirsty, kind of not forcing it. Um, so it's going to be the, and maybe not all the charts are going to have it, but it should be on Jovian where you are. There are going to be four arrows surrounding the head and it's the very top left one. But basically human design can speak to whether or not we're designed to eat more consistently or not. There's another layer of our design that can kind of speak to the conditions under which we buy, best digest food. So like some people like operate best when they're eating when the sun's out. Other people operate best when like the sun has set. Some people need like music around them. Like other people, it's all about like eating food that's warmer or maybe colder, um, maybe not mixing their food, eating one thing at a time. So it can re reveal like how our digestive system works best. It's often not the first piece that I rec first piece I recommend diving into. I really recommend the kind of type strategy and authority, but it can be incredibly useful. And often if you're aligned, you're kind of doing that naturally. Okay, somebody asked, how do you know when a projector is off track and on track? So again, we've got the not self, like the not self and the aligned self. And again, all this stuff is covered in the blueprint and, and so much more, but the uh, not self or projector is a sense of bitterness, which is like not feeling recognized, not feeling appreciated, not feeling invited in. And a sense of being on track is a feeling of success, which can show up as like material success or just like also like, wow, I feel so recognized. I feel so appreciated. I feel so invited in. So always asking yourself, where do I feel the most bitter? Where do I feel the most successful? When bitterness shows up, it's either like, maybe this is not the right thing for me anymore, or I need to kind of like remove my energy and see if the like invitation is still there and kind of have a conversation because invitations can expire sometimes too. So making sure that kind of invitation and recognition is still there. Okay, so somebody said, can you tell me something about the definition? No, great question. I, I didn't mention that. So the definition is around how we best process information. So you're going to see your definition is either going to be like single, split, triple. So if you are a single definition, it means that you are naturally independent and don't necessarily need to be around other people to help you process. There's like a natural sense of wholeness within you. Um, and you might kind of process information pretty quickly. And you might feel like the people around you are like a little bit threatened by your independence or like want you to need them more. So you really want to be around people that so honor that independent part of you. Um, if you are a split definition, and I, I'm Andre, I'm going to get to your question after this. If you're a split definition, it means that you're kind of naturally collaborative in your energy. Energy, you really kind of find wholeness by being around other people. So if you're ever feeling stuck, like, I mean, some of us are still on lockdown, but like, if you're ever feeling stuck, like go on a walk, go to a coffee shop, go to a restaurant, like allow yourself to be stimulated by other people. Like that's what kind of brings you wholeness. And you're kind of really learn, here to learn and kind of connect through partnership. Um, if you're triple and Diana, I see your question too. Okay, here as well. So um, if you're a triple, um, it basically, no, you're good. I have them both open. I'm, I'm looking at the questions in both places. So um, a triple basically means that for you, you need a lot of freedom and flexibility. Like you might feel like a little bit trapped or confined if you're like in the same environment with the same person all day, every day. And so you need freedom. So like, you know, working on the same team all the time can be very challenging. So it's like, you know, like moving through different groups of people throughout the day. Say you're at home with your partner all the time. Like if, it, if you're feeling stuck, it's not about them. It's like, I've got to go move my energy and get stimulated in different ways and then come back. So you need a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility, a lot of movement. 
So Diana asked, how can I make unambiguous decisions when I'm a triple split in design? So it's going to depend on your decision making. But I think the most important thing is that give yourself time to process and give yourself time to kind of be in different environments and be stimulated by different people, because that's going to bring clarity and activations in new ways. Like you're not really meant to be stimulated by the same team, the same person all day, every day. You need a lot more than that. Andre said, do people with a split definition always need another person to bridge the gap? So basically what they're suggesting is that when you're split definition, it means they're kind of two, without getting too technical, it means that there are kind of like two parts of your design that are kind of operating separately. Like maybe like for me, it's like my emotions and my mind. And so they're kind of like their own circuits of energy. And like when I'm around other people, everything kind of comes connected and becomes like clear. I'm maybe more like easily able to communicate my emotions. So you don't need people with the thing like when I look at partnership, I'll always see like, do you connect them up and make them feel more whole? Um, but Andre, like you can be bridged by just being in an environment. It's not just about a person. So like it's going to be bridged in lots of different ways. But yes, it is good to kind of be around people that activate that within you, but it's not always going to be consistent. So it's, you also don't want to kind of rely on it. But you'll often be drawn to people, whether it's colleagues or partners, romantic partners that kind of bridge the gap. Um, so much amazing info. Can we rewatch this? Yes. I think they're going to post a recording in, um, on the website. So then if you don't know your hour exactly, does that change the outcome a lot? You know, it really depends. I will say when people like have a range, I'll always look to see like how much does it kind of change within the range. Um, I would say if you're like, okay, like it's between seven and 9 a.m., like we'll just check and see how much it shifts within that time. I find often the most important pieces, like the type, the strategy, the authority, the profile, the centers, like often remains pretty consistent. Often the pieces around like the food or maybe the environment that you're going to thrive in um, might change a little bit. So there are kind of deeper details that kind of change a little bit more hour by hour, um, or sorry, minute by minute. But most of the most important stuff is kind of like more general for a little bit of a uh, uh, like longer period of time. So somebody said, what is the meaning of inner authority and profile? So again, the inner authority is how we're meant to make decisions. That's basically what is the thing within us that we can just, or what is the process that we have to go through that we can rely on to make decisions that are correct for ourselves. So again, summary, sacral, all about your gut response in the moment. If you're emotional, the clarity comes with time, sleeping on things. If you're splenic, it's all about trusting this intuitive kind of quiet knowing within the moment, being very spontaneous. If you're self-projected, it's giving yourself time to verbally process and speak things out. If you're ego, it's all about whether or not you really have the willpower to do something, whether or not like your heart's really in it. If you're mental, it's all about talking things out in different environments. And if you're a reflector, it's meant to give yourself a full 30 days before you make a big decision. So um, what is the meaning of profiles? So if you look at your profile, there are going to be 12 different profiles in human design. And it's going to be made up of two different numbers. So I can very quickly go through the six different numbers because if you look at a profile, you'll see like your profile is like I'm a six two. So I would pay attention when I talk to like the six and the two or your one three or three five. So pay attention to the two different numbers. But it basically is like how we're really here to kind of manifest our purpose. And so if you have a one in your profile, it means that it's all around like you guys are really here to like investigate, get into the details of things, build a really strong foundation and like whatever it is you do. You might feel like a little bit insecure if you don't know enough. That insecurity is often just a sign that there's more to learn and like it's time to just go deeper. Um, so these people are like here to be like our experts and our authorities that we can kind of really rely on. If you have a two in your profile, it means that you are very much here to be unnatural at what you do. You are not meant to do the things that come like super like challenging or feel really difficult, but things that come easily to you. And often we don't assign worth to those things, but the things that come easy to you are like exactly the things that you're kind of meant to be paid for and supported for. Um, if you have a two in your profile, it also means there's a little bit of a natural hermit nature to your design. So just like um, honoring that time alone to kind of do your own thing in your own time. So if you have a three in your profile, so Lama, listen to the three and the five. If you have a three in your profile, you are so here to learn through trial and error, through bumping into things, making mistakes, experimenting. In some ways, there's no such thing as a mistake for anyone with a, third line, with a three in their profile because like they are just like here to learn through making mistakes, kind of here to be like in the messiness of it all. Um, and the best thing that you can do is just like, just, you know, like always ask yourself, like, what did I learn? Like, how can you keep gathering wisdom? Like you are as much here to discover all the things that don't work as you are here to discover all the things that do. Like you're our scientist. So kind of embracing that kind of messy trial and error process. If you have a four in your profile, um, it means that your opportunities are all meant to come through your network and your community, like what you guys are doing here. Um, and it's all about through the people that you know. So rather than kind of like working with strangers, that's really kind of like leveraging your community and cultivating your community and trusting that all opportunities come from that. Whether it's like meeting, like starting dating somebody that was in your community or even like having your initial clients be your friends. If you have five in your profile, it means that there's a very kind of natural fixer, problem solver nature to your design. You guys are here to like, 
come in, save the day, offer a solution no one has thought of and like check back out, but you're not here to be like saving the day all the time. The thing to be aware of if you have five is that people can project a lot of things onto you that you can like fix them or guide them or lead them or save them. And so for you to just like really know yourself well enough to really only say yes to the projections that are truly correct for you and not to construct your identity based on what other people see in you, but kind of in what you know of yourself. And finally, if you have a six in your profile, it means that you are a natural role model, teacher, kind of authority. Um, people might naturally look to you for guidance and advice. Um, and often these people tend to live their life in three phases. So the first 30 years tends to be a time of like a lot of trial and error, bumping into things. Um, 30 to 50 is a time of kind of like stepping back, becoming the observer, processing all the things that you've learned. And you're actually kind of meant to hit your prime when you turn 50, which doesn't mean that you have to wait until then, but it means that you kind of embody wisdom in a different way. So obviously that's so high level, the different profiles, you know, they're gonna be different combinations of each. Yeah, everybody's gonna have two numbers. So every profile will be. So it'll be like a six, two, a three, five, a four, one. The idea is that the number that is first is the thing that you're more conscious and aware of. The number that is second is a thing that people might kind of see in you. People like you might be a little bit less conscious of, but people observe it in you. Barbara said, does it affect the design when I was born a month too soon? Um, no, what matters is the minute that you were born. So like if it wasn't your due date, that's perfect. It's not about like when you were expected to be born, but when you were actually born. Um, I don't want to jump the gun, but can you cover the strategy in the incarnation cross and what the number there? Okay, so the strategy I covered at the beginning. So strategy, again, for generators and manifesting generators, let things come to you magnetism. The more you do it, you love, the more it will come. You're waiting for something to kind of activate your gut response before you pursue it. For projector, the strategy is waiting for a sense of recognition and invitation before engaging. If you're a manifestor, your strategy is initiating, making the first move and also about informing. So once you've made a decision, it's reflecting on all the people that his decision is going to impact and making sure you let them know before you do it. And if you're a reflector, the strategy is also kind of waiting for a sense of recognition and invitation, but then giving yourself a long time before you commit. There are 192 incarnation crosses, so we obviously can't cover those, but those are just basically like kind of key when you talk about this, the numbers, they kind of are referencing certain qualities within your design that are really important. Um, it's basically kind of a broader thing around like how we're here to manifest our purpose. It's often not very actionable, which is often why I don't kind of share it initially. Um, because it kind of comes a little bit later in life, but it happens like when you were honoring your, when you're honoring your design, when you're kind of honoring your profile. And so like for me, my incarnation cross is all about saying the same thing over and over again, which is basically what I do all day, every day. So like reading it, it's always a reminder of like, oh yes, I'm on track. Keep going. Um, okay. And so, um, okay. I talked about the, the three, five. Um, so Somebody said, I'm a manifesting generator. I remember that part of the body is the sacral. I've had huge pain in my sacral for some years now. If you could tell me what it means and what I can do about it. So brings up such an interesting question. And we only have a couple minutes left because I do have a session in a second. So I'm gonna have to hop off. Um, but the sacral is all about your gut response. So if you're a manifesting generator, you have a very strong gut response. If you're sacral, you're meant to trust it in the moment. If you're emotional, you're meant to like trust it over time. Um, but often like that sacral kind of discomfort can occur when you're like really not listening to your gut and trusting your gut. So our human is then can kind of reveal all the areas where we're taking a little bit off track. And so I would really check in with like, does the gut feel like a thing that you're connected to? And does it feel like a thing that you're trusting in terms of how you make decisions? Somebody asked, I have the four, the seven, the 11 in my mind. What do those mean? Those are all different qualities. So, you know, when you look at all those different numbers and the lines that connect to one center to another, those are just like innate strengths that we carry. And so like, you know, the 11, for example, is like all about like ideas and like, oh, we're going to be like stimulated by new ideas and like stimulating other people with your ideas. So when we look at, and the blueprint covers a lot of this stuff, but it's just kind of like, what are those natural innate strengths that we can rely on? The seven is all about being like, just like the alpha, the leader, all about kind of being invited into leadership. Um, David asks, what does the not self mean? Um, so the not self, again, is the areas where you can get taken off track. So for frustration, for manifesting generators and generators, bitterness for projectors, anger for manifestors, and, um, and disappointment for reflectors. So often when that becomes the overwhelming fe feeling, it's kind of just like an invitation to step back and really um, kind of wait for your gut or whatever it is to kind of pull you back to re-engage. It's often a signal that it's like you're engaging with it in a way that's not working. So it's just like helping you to kind of course correct. Does your blueprint reading come with info about relationships and what detailed areas? Yeah, so the blueprint covers. So again, the blueprint, the discounted code is a small world, all caps. 
and it basically is a written guide to your design. And so it covers your type, your strategy, your authority in relationships. It covers your definitions or how you're best meant to process information. It covers each of your open centers and where you're kind of most likely to get taken off track. Um, it covers your not self. It covers all those lines, those channels, those kind of natural strengths that you carry. It covers your profile and it also covers like the teams that you work best in and questions to work with all of it. So it's just kind of meant to give you like your guide that you can just like keep returning to. Um, and I'll, I also do sessions. I'll include the link here. I book out quite a bit in advance, but if you guys want to book a session, um, I'll include that link. Um, I think that I answered everything. I think you guys, this was such a pleasure. I hope this was useful. I know it was like new to a lot of you. And so it can be a little bit bumpy at first, but I really appreciate you guys having so many questions, being so open to it. Um, and always such a pleasure to introduce new people. Um, yeah, so just on my site is in terms of an email address, my site is erinclairjones.com. There's a contact form and that will come straight to me. So I'll respond to that. Um, thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Lots of love. I'm going to head out.